<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to Code with Italians, the stream where we never find emails. <laughs> yes. So uh, thank you everybody. Thank you, Rahul, for being with us again. Uh, thank you for trying to, to log in on Twitch even if Twitch didn't allow you to log in, so well, <laughs> we will try again later. Uh, just a, a random question. Do you hear us, people in the chat? <laughs> because this is usually... Always a good problem. question. So, yeah, always a good question. How long, how long do we need to talk before they, somebody says... They should says, hear you. We don't hear you. They should okay. hear you. I did check. <laughs> you Fantastic. never know. You never know. There's always something that doesn't work. No. Oh, thank you, Mark. Um, okay. And obviously... <ride> Hola a todos e bienvenidos a otra, a, a otra puntata de Código con los Italianos. Uh, ahora tenemos Raúl. Bienvenido, Raúl. Uh, tengo que hablar español porque... <ride> Hasta luego. Uh, tengo que hablar español uh, porque Sebastiano no me, no me quiere y tenemos un... Una... <ride> <laughs> un, un, un premio uh, en Twitch works en for Twitch. me <laughs> yeah. uh, so la, la gente puede puede, puede. hablamos español yes. <laughs> uh, anyway beautiful people thank you thank you for, for for being with us Raul welcome back how are you doing pretty good how are you guys doing good to be back yeah it's been uh a long break between all the conferences and traveling that we had last month. Uh, but I'm very happy that we're back with performance because this is something that people have asked for a lot. So, and I also know that you have a lot of new stuff to share, uh, which is very exciting. And I, Mark might have spoiled it in the chat earlier, but who knows, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the last time I was here, I try to do a deep dive on Perfetto to the best of my ability. I'm, I'm not, by no means an expert, but like I showed you what I know about Perfetto. You and, know way uh, more than I do. That makes you an expert <laughs> in my eyes. <laughs> also, it, it became the standard de facto video on YouTube about Perfetto, by the way. <laughs> it's like the episode about Perfetto uh, on, on YouTube. It was clearly so, good enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's definitely best, the best. We which is both a good and a bad thing, if that's yeah. the only video that you have. I'm sort of worried now. Maybe maybe we need to, uh, you know, as, as a group, I think we need to do a lot more to sort of educate people about Perfetto and how cool oh. it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, welcome back. <laughs> Alejandro in the chat is saying, it will be like, uh, by, no me and a, by no means an expert. And I'm like, oh, come on, bro. <laughs> Hi, Ale. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello. So, uh, so not not being an expert, I just want to put it out there. He's also helped me with work manager on the side because he's not an expert, right? But he just helps people on the weirdest stuff. So thank you also on that side. Um, so I just want to, please. Sorry, the funny thing about work manager is, uh, you know, I worked work, I worked on work manager before I worked started working on performance. And I worked on it for a good, like, two and a half, three years. And it turns out that once you touch Work Manager, you're always, you know, involved in Work Manager in some, yeah. in some capability. So yeah. it turns out that the code can... that you write kind of follows you around. So That's actually <laughs> the same thing that happened to, uh, to Pietro. Because, you know, Pietro Maggi, he worked on Work Manager and... Uh, I was working on Work Manager, I was building something with Work Manager, and the more I looked on the internet, the more his blog posts on Medium kept popping out. And so I started harassing him and he was like, even I'm not working on that stuff anymore. Can you ask Raul? So he threw you under the bus. <laughs> like, and then he was like, but is it working on work? I don't know. I'm just going to ask. <laughs> and then you're like, I'm not working on this stuff anymore. But, you know, you share the same curse. Uh, on work manager once, work on work manager forever. Um, so this is, this is the best. Anyway, um, I just want to do a quick plug, Sebastiano, so that we can move to the, move over to the, the good stuff. 
Uh, we launched a new store. The link is going to be in the description, and I'm going to be also fancy because I'm pointing. Uh, I'm noting down what time is it? 14 minutes and a half. 14 minutes and 30. <laughs> so I'm very. So you I'm going to also put a card. You need a fancy script gonna... on the on the stream deck, so you can just push a button and it stores the. Display. No, I'm, I'm I'm waiting I'm waiting for the GPT that is that sure. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a, a card here. So if you want to buy the the T-shirt or any other things that we have, we have bottles, mugs. Uh, we also have bandanas for dogs because why not? Uh, we have some cool de uh, design that you saw. Sebastiano was wearing it at Redcon Italia. Uh, we have the classic pizza. So if you want to support the the stream check out the store. If you have an Amazon Prime subscription, you can subscribe for free uh, to one channel, uh, one Twitch channel every month. Just connect your Amazon Prime subscription to your Amazon uh, Gaming and then your Twitch account. So everything uh, falls together and you will see a check mark that says subscribe for free with Prime and then you can support the stream. Um, yeah, shall we? All right. Yes. Um, so just just set some just to set some context today. Today we'll be doing something slightly different. Uh, we'll we'll touch we'll touch upon Perfetto sort of tangentially. Or like that's not the main goal of this uh, of this uh, you know demo or this live stream. Uh, today I'll be talking about some of the new things that we did in benchmarking and uh, namely uh, like how we improved baseline profiles even further, uh, starting a new version of AGP. So we'll take something that uh, a really simple app like Jet News, which is a compose sample that you can find on Android compose samples on GitHub. And I think it's a really simple, like your typical feed app that shows you a bunch of articles and like has a list view. So we'll experiment with that. Uh, I can't get any more basic than that. So I think uh, <laughs> what I have right now is, uh, you know, the tip of tree of the compose samples, and then we'll start making changes to, so I can show, show off like, all, the, all the cool things. So just to prove that I have no changes pending here, let me just do git status. Like, like, like you can see, I have, there's, there's nothing going on here yet. Uh, let's open up Jet News. I mean, um, we trust you, man. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So we have Jet uh, News. Uh, we have a question from the chat, which is, mm -hmm. uh, why not Recycler View? Um, I can do Recycler View, but uh, I want to take something. Uh, like, I want to take a Compose project and show you the. I think Compose is sort of like it tests all the tooling uh, a lot, a lot harder. Only because there's so much more user land code in Compose. Like the entire UI toolkit is inside shipping in the, in the app, uh, as I, against parts of it uh, with uh, in the boot in the boot class part. So when you when you say list view, you mean a lazy column, right? I meant a lazy column. Okay, so okay, that I, that I might be, have been the be. source of the confusion here. <laughs> ah, I should be careful when I say yeah, yeah. I, I was referring to a lazy column. Yeah. People yeah. still have PTSD, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, uh, like I do, uh, when I, whenever I start with a new uh, uh, project, I just go into libs.versions.taml. This is my favorite thing to do. I upgrade everything. Uh, so let's start. <laughs> you right, really uh, like to live dangerously. <laughs> the last time right, I did so... that live, it took like an hour to get it to build. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, All right. Why, I'm just gonna... why not, right? Why yeah, not? Let's just, Roboletric. Let's just keep wow. Things. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, HTTP. Yeah. I mean, the, the basic stuff. Yeah, sure. Let's see the Maps, YOLO approach. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a cowboy approach. Uh, Rahul, can you can you increase the zoom a bit? Because uh, sure. I think people might find it a bit hard to follow. Appearance. Midway. Zoom ID. Just above there. Ah. Underneath uh, compact. Underneath compact mode. Ah, yes. Uh -huh. One fifty. All right. All right. This is better. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, so okay. we can see the the gradle errors faster. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Why? Why do you have to be like this? I work on tooling, man. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So I'm That's... just doing the uh, yellow approach, which is every time I see a y yellow squiggly, I'm just gonna like change it. I like, used whatever. to be the same. <laughs> <laughs> what could go wrong? Um, well, I'm pretty sure a few things will go wrong, but we'll figure things out along the way. You know, this is the this is the fun part, right? Like you get to, to test the tooling to the limits, and you're like, oh, what happened here? Uh, um, <laughs> Jesus Christ! 
All right. Uh, I'm also going to update the uh, Android Gradle plugin to the latest table, which is 813. Uh, I'm using Iguana Beta, sorry, Iguana Canary 12 for reference for people who, who are trying to follow along or who might want to follow along later. So I'm just doing a Gradle well, sync. Well, is it the, the last one, 12? Yes. Yeah, basically uh, whatever the latest yes, Canary the, is. Yeah, yeah, 12, 12. Well, yeah. no, because I, I want to I want to be sure that you are brave. Open so toolbox yeah. and yeah. check. Well, you know, you yeah, would be braver using the second to last canary because then everything else is broken. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> no, the nightly, the nightly. Do you have yeah. the, the nightly? There is, there is a dev. Right? You can you can use the the nightly version if you want. Is it is it building on your laptop, Sebastian? Uh, no, they asked me, but I told them that because it, it builds overnight, uh, my laptop is off ah. overnight, so it wouldn't be uh, reliable. Uh, uh, time zones, time zones. Yeah. So one thing you have to worry about when you're updating <laughs> dependencies like this is notice how I bumped up the version of Kotlin to 1.92. Yep. Right? And then you have uh -huh. KSP down there. And then I have to bump Compose Compiler too. And so now I have to uh -huh. find a version of Compose Compiler that is uh, compatible. So I have that page handy. So if you look at <laughs> in the wow. favorites, <laughs> yes. Uh, so one, if you five, notice, one nine two uh, zero is one five four. So let's take that. Uh, let's I'm, go back I'm here. here. Like the the tooling person in me is like, why don't we have that built in? <laughs> <laughs> why, and why I know indeed? I will regret I saying know. that, but why? <laughs> Someone is going to hate me on my team for sure. <laughs> uh, also notice one other thing. Compose compiler is not being highlighted. It's not be actually being used by the Taml, which is like the only nice feature that I think one of the nicest features of Taml. So clearly we need to like force Gradle to sort of use that version. So let's go to maven.google.com and find the uh, coordinates of Compose compiler. So that's uh, let's do that. Uh, let's go back here. So let's see. Compose C B. Okay, Some, somewhere here should be good. Android X compose compiler equal to module Y <laughs> version dot ref. Yeah, to... it's probably used somewhere else because uh, I I have the same thing in bundle where it's uh -huh. used but not as a dependency. So it's mm -hmm. the version is read in the build.gradle.kts but mm -hmm. uh, injected. Right. Um, okay, so let's let's sync again and uh, ah what happened there? Invalid <laughs> Tumble. <laughs> oh uh, my god, what have I done? I don't, uh, where did I I don't even even. Okay. Uh, you're missing one of those episodes. So where you have compiler, compiler, you should have a, a colon in between compiler and compiler uh, in the module oh, coordinates. Oh, right. Wait, what happened? How did I copy the wrong thing? Uh, like, ah, like this, that? This page is wrong. <laughs> this makes me sad. Okay. Let's you know what? Out. We should add the, the Tomol declaration to, to that as well. I, I'm taking notes. Okay. Let me get my post-its. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll try wow. this again. Properly I'm gonna file issues so. as we. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do that. But I will file them. Open. And compose compiler compiler colon compiler. All right, that looks right. Let's try this again. Sync it, man. Okay, this Sink time it. it's going further. All right. Go. Boom. All right, we did it. We did it. Now we're now using the latest compose compiler. Uh, just Woo. so. Just Planet. so that we know this actually builds, let's actually try and build it. <laughs> yes. You never know. How about we? How about you build this? Let's do this. Oh man! Oh, this is fast. Okay. Don't jinx it, man. <laughs> no, I mean this is this is. I mean, on my machine, it will take like a minute to go to do configuring. So oh, look at all yeah. those cores. <laughs> <laughs> bing, 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 bing. By the way, Rahul, while this works, um, someone was asking earlier um, if you uh, can talk about the, the new uh, strong skipping mode in Compose, if you know anything about that. I, I only know that at a cursory level. Uh, I think what it's doing uh, uh, at a high level is sort of uh, not using... The not relying on stability information as much of on the like not relying on the types as much, 
and it's actually going to defer to uh, the object dot equals uh, more when mm. doing the actual skipping bits. So I think it doesn't rely on stability uh, as much as it used to. So it's just going to do like if you, if you're if you're familiar with like what Svelte does or what React does, it's more akin to what that is doing mm. instead of like what Compose compiler was doing, which was a lot more clever where it was trying to establish stability from the type system and sort of like using that information and not calling these equals methods. Uh, because we assume, like, or I think my the, the reason why we didn't do that in the beginning was we thought it might be expensive to do equals. Uh, uh, because if uh, the equals implementation is bad, then mm -hmm. you know, like you're kind of host. So that is my understanding. But of course, I may be entirely wrong. So please code, don't <laughs> need code to me need to ask. Uh, I guess Ben Trengrove. Ben, yeah, I think Ben Trengrove might actually uh, 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 explain that better. Uh, anyway, so I think it builds, which is uh, surprising, but we made it. Uh, so, all right, now, uh, so if you feel, let's look at the build.gradle.kts. So if you notice, uh, this uh, the build file ha like handily defines a release. And they have overridden the sign-in config uh, to use the debug sign-in config, which means we can just build a release variant. And if you notice, uh, is, is, is minify enabled is actually true, right? So now let's try and build the APK in release mode. Right? So now uh, when we build the app in release mode, um, there should already there should already be some baseline profiles that are coming from Compose that should be packaged in uh, with the APK. So we'll see that also in action. Um, so uh, so once we build the APK, we'll look at APK analyzer and we'll see what's inside the APK. So you can you get a, a, a nice intuition for what you should expect mm -hmm. uh, when you're building um, things with the latest tools. So let's wait for minify release. Oh, if this was not like living dangerously, I have one more thing that I want to do to live even more dangerously. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, why not? Go man, I, I admire your courage. Uh, I'm just going to say that. <laughs> and also yeah, your I'm, luck, well, because well, you managed to get it to build almost right away. Yeah, with one warning. What the I hell? Mean, I mean, I do this a lot. So <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. So living like dangerously, my... but knowing how to do it. All right, so yeah, we, built the, we, we built the APK. Um, so let's come back to uh, build folder here. Let's go into outputs. Uh, let's look at APK. Let's look at the release variant and then just like drag it here. So now you should oh, see wow. uh, that, you know, we have um, this, you know, you can actually see uh, assets dexopt baseline.prof and you can actually see uh, the actual compiled profile in here. Um, which just looks like gobbledygook because it's also what happened under the hood is because, because your source symbols got transformed by R8. We under the hood use an obfuscation map to transform those symbols uh, to the right target symbols that R8 will pick. So that's happened under the hood uh, without you knowing. Um, but the other interesting thing is notice the number of methods here. It's uh, 6653, right? And just like, just try and remember that number. Um, it's not, not super. Note it down. Six, 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 yeah. five, three. Six, 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 mm -hmm. five, three. Right. All right. So now um, let's do uh, one last thing. So let's actually go into settings. Our Gradle. Uh, let's actually add um, one bit here. But hold on. Where's my? Uh, it's like the, the, how is on? Uh, I I thought for a second it was adding like a repository called Rahul Private. <laughs> you know. It's, Pulling stuff from his laptop. Oh no, I have a Raspberry Pi on my desk. That would that would be pretty nice if I could do that. But you know, uh, <laughs> so what I'm going, what I'm actually going to do here. But oh, even right here. All right. So what I did is I added uh, a repo here. I'm I'm, okay. I'm going to use a trip of tree R8, like R8 from source, like close to like, you know. <laughs> What? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh my god! Okay. Um, I, uh, ma, have you have you noticed the nonchalance? How? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah. I just happen oh, to yeah, do that every day. 
<laughs> I do I do this a lot. I need to do like I want a t-shirt. I do this a lot. Oh, so if you go to the R8 uh, code base, uh, you know, you click on main. Uh, it has all these. It basically has like all the all the commits that happen. So if you want if you want to like if you want to uh, look at the list of commits, sure. you can actually see. Um, you know, you can actually see the full list. Hold on, let me show you what the full list actually looks like. Well, I have I have is, a link is somewhere. This, is I this a, like open stuff? Can you show? That? Are you sure you can show this? Yeah, yeah, I can show you. This is like not, oh, nothing. Cool. No, no, no. This is not a secret. So if you go here, okay. Um, you know, this is a this is like tip of tree. So like the last commit was by Christopher Adamson. Uh, so I'm just I'm just going to take that commit, right? Let's live three more. Hours, let's three hours ago. Yeah, because even if you tried it earlier, why not using the newest commit where everything yeah. I'm sure yeah. is working fine? <laughs> yep. Uh, so let's actually add that as a dependency uh, to our uh, to our little script here. Oh God! I All thought right. I was reckless. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean. You you are like oh yeah we are fancy we are using like the latest compose and he's building R8 from scratch cool yeah why not all right why not please let's think now all right so now if you notice <laughs> oh you I, you just throw the the commit there not even a version you just yeah, yeah, throw yeah. the commit so is a version <laughs> yeah shut up I know I mean that's <laughs> <laughs> but even like, uh, oh yeah, this is a build. No, 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 it's a commit. Okay, yep. cool. <laughs> All right, we managed to uh, pull in the latest version of R8 because we like to oh, live yeah. it dangerously. Um, and with that, you can actually take advantage of all the cool features that R8 brings oh, well, in. Uh, so Somebody is asking in the chat, what's R8? Can you expand ah. on that? R8 is actually a tool uh, that we that is that should be used by most Android developers. If you are asking this question, then you should uh, definitely read more about how cool R8 is. R8 is actually a source-to-source -source optimizer. So what it does is it takes your uh, jar files uh, and sort of does two things. It actually tree shakes them. So it essentially looks at classes that are not actually called by the the, the program uh, given given the entry points of the program. So what R8 will do, it'll it'll look at like all your Android entry points, and it'll walk the graph of like the classes and methods that you're referring to. And as long as uh, you're not doing something silly like use uh, reflection in strange ways, it can sort of reason about what your what which classes and methods are actually used by the source program, and it can just tree shake the rest away. So if you so uh, an easy way to look at the difference is if you look at like let's we, we'll actually look at that difference right now. So now that I've actually added R8, let's actually build. Uh, for, uh, let me show you the difference. So if, you, if I do app, mm -hmm. assemble, a debug. So here I'm building the debug variant. And so when you're building the debug variant, what uh, Android Gradle plugin does is it does not like additionally, uh, you know, does not perform any additional optimizations like tree shaking and minification. Those are the role uh, of that. That is typically done when you're building a release build and not a debug build, because we want you to sort of be able to iterate a lot faster when you're doing debug. Because the goal is to go from uh, your IDE to the device and like uh, give you, uh, you know, basically give you a debugger that you can use to step into your code, with with as few transformations as possible, because that is your like that is the code that the IDE IDE will show. What R8 will do under the hood is it basically will tree shake your code. So a lot of classes will go missing because they were never actually used uh, by the source program. And then it will also minify uh, all the class names and method names to save space. Because uh, at the end of the day, this, these are uh, binaries uh, that are being downloaded uh, through the Play Store or through other app stores onto your device. And the faster the download happens and the, and the smaller the payload, the better it is for the platform in general. Additionally, R8 can also perform some really cool optimizations uh, because, like Java bytecode, is not like optimal by any means. So it does. Uh, so, for example, if you have an interface and you have only a single class that ever implements the interface, which is a pretty common pattern if you have like a testing mocker, like if you have a test interface and and a real interface, for example, R8 knows that anytime you're actually referring to the interface in your code, it'll always be your implementation. So it can like rewrite code to sort of like point to the implementation directly under the hood. So you, you don't have to walk the, uh, you don't have to make like that. It'll turn and invoke virtual or, in, uh, or, uh, or uh, you know, 
an invoke interface into an invoke direct, which is like more efficient bytecode uh, for the platform when you're, uh, you know, when you're um, running that code on the device. So the more of these optimizations that R8 can do, the better it is. It can even do things like constant folding. So if you have like expressions that are always constant, R8 will just like evaluate those constants in and be, and uh, during optimization and just like hard code it the hard code the constant into your bytecode so you don't have to do expression evaluation uh, during app startup for example. So there's all these crazy optimizations built into R8. So if there's like one thing that you can take away today. Like if you just turn on R8, your performance improves by 30%, like straight away. You don't have to do anything oh. but turn on R8. So nice. just to show you how, how much of a difference it makes, let's actually go into our IDE. Let's actually go into uh, our debug build, which I just kicked off, right? So if you go into debug uh, and you look at appdebug.apk, mm -hmm. uh, we have what, like 14? How many classes? That's we a have? lot of stuff. Jesus. We have like 14 classes.dex files, right? Like we have 14 of them. And like, look at the size of the APK. It's 22 megs, right? Uh, download size is 20.3 20, megs. But look at the release variant that we have. Uh, if I if I drag the release APK, that's 4.7 4. Oh, megs. Shit. And the download okay. size is 3.3 .3 megs. And look at what happened to classes.dex. We went from 15 oh. to 1 because we just tree shaked away the rest. Like it's not being used by the program. It's not being used by the app, so we could just like get rid of it, which is super cool. So, just imagine how much of how much more efficient uh, your code is. Also, if you look at classes.dex, uh, notice how all these like strange symbols started appearing. So J J two zero is uh, a minified class. If you look at debug and you click on, uh, and here you can actually see like the full package name uh, and and class name. So you can actually see like the the, the fully uh, you know, fully qualified classes in their in their in their in their source symbols. In in the release APK, we'll sort of minify everything except for the things that are explicitly marked as please don't minify the name because they're being the name is relevant. So, so for example, if you notice here, com example jet news, the jet news application, the name is not minified because the name is something that the Android manifest.xml refers to by the fully qualified class name. And that is something that uh, need, that that we uh, that the Android operating system will need to find when it invokes application yeah. start, right? So there is still some amount of control that you have, and uh, that's why uh, you know like uh, turning on R8 is so important. And uh, typically, uh, using a new version of R8 like I did is a pretty safe thing to do. Um, also, you can just use stick to the version of R8 that comes alongside with uh, the version of AGP that you're using. But I like to. I always like to use new tools because I want to see all the I want to get all the new improvements uh, that I constantly see. So uh, that's why I'm kind of showing all these things off so people are like not as scared uh, to try these new tools. All right. Um, so now that I now now that you understand the difference between debug and release APK, uh, what we did is we just uh, just to explain what I did, I added the uh, the Maven, uh, a snapshot repository that R8 makes available. Uh, I'll make all these links available at the end so you can sort of like do something like this uh, afterwards on your own. And then I added uh, a dependency, uh, uh, you know, to the build script. And what this does is basically, this is kind of a cool hack. What did, the way Gradle works is there is no class path isolation. So this gets added to your class path uh, as uh, the IDE is evaluating the, your Gradle build scripts. And essentially, even though AGP ships with its own version of R8, because this has been added to the boot class path, this has been added to the Gradle class path in the beginning, uh, when Java is class loading uh, R8, source, R8 classes, it just looks at this new version as against the version that shipped with uh, AGP, which is why mm. I can sort of like swap the versions of R8 that is yeah, that AGP will use by default, which is uh, pretty nice. And now uh, that we have uh, a new version of R8, let's actually uh, do the re release date. Let's actually build the release variant of the app because I think the previous version, uh, we built it with the version of R8 that was shipped with AGP. And the way you can determine uh, that you're using a new version of R8 is where you get this message that says, cannot parse shrinker version. Here, AGP is saying that I don't know what version of R8 you're using. I'm just going to assume 0 0.0.0. .0. And that's totally fine. Like nobody cares uh, about the version of R8. Uh, uh, except for but it's a, it's a it's a a cue for knowing that you are not using the one that ships with IGP. 
That's right. That's right. And so this is also a way to verify that the changes you made to the build script are actually working. So otherwise, it's like it's very, very hard to say which version of R it is being used. Thankfully, uh, this word, this like this nice log is a giveaway that oh, you're doing something, um, you know, outside of the norm. And so I think once we, once this app finishes building, uh, we should be able to see what the new release APK is. And like, I, I, I wouldn't expect to see a huge difference uh, between the version of Pirate that we used from, from before. So let's actually, uh, you know, um, close all the other tabs. Let's reload this page. And here you can see that it went from 4.9 to 4.7. So it did a few more things uh, from before, nice. which is which is nice. Uh, and uh, and uh, your classes.dex uh, still got minified, so that's good. So now what we'll do is, uh, we have our we have our APK. Let's actually uh, uh, generate a bunch of baseline profiles. So like this is uh, an old directory. Let me just delete it. So uh, there's nothing going on there. Uh, okay. So what I'll do is I'll go to file new module. Uh, hold on. File new module. I think my mouse is super twitchy today. All right. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. I'm not gonna make a file. joke about the fact you're on Twitch. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Uh, I didn't what I'll make a is, joke. <laughs> uh, but what I'll do right now is I'll pick the baseline profile generator uh, template. And this is a new template that is shipping with Iguana. Uh, you can use it in the Canary. Um, so what this does is it basically uh, gives you a new module that you can use to build a baseline profile uh, for, ex for an existing APK. Automatically, like without you doing, without you having to like manually copy files around, uh, like it gives you benchmarks to boot. Uh, so you, like, uh, let me, I'll explain uh, once we actually create this template. So let me uh, call it baseline profiles because I, I like the pr plural version. And I'm just going to stick to Kotlin and the Kotlin DSL and I'm just going to click finish. Let's, uh, uh, it added a bunch of stuff it, to the project. Is it the... Is the this new baseline profile um, wizard available only in the canary, or is it? It's well, it'll available. be available in the stable version too, but it'll be available starting Android Iguana. Uh, okay. Um, right. Um, and uh, basically, what the template did, it it uh, it already it added it it did a few things. So let's actually go back to our. Uh, uh, our, 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 uh, let's actually look at the st uh, the diff to see what how what happened. So clearly, what it did, it, it uh, if you know, like this is a little bit confusing because of all the other noise. But here you can see that it added, uh, a, you know, profile installer, and it added a baseline profile Gradle plugin, um, and 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 it it included a new module called baseline profiles, right? So uh, let's go back to our project and let's actually uh, look at settings our Gradle. There's a new module called Baseline Profiles. Let's get rid of the space here, just so we clean things up. Uh, and then let's go to Build Up Gradle. Um, it it added a new plugin here, as you can see, Lives Plugins Android X Baseline Profile is new. It applied this plugin uh, in the Build Up Gradle.kts. And if you go into the Apps uh, Build Up Gradle.kts, it added this weird-looking thing called Baseline Profile. Let's actually clean it up further. Uh, and let's actually move this to the bottom because I like to organize my dependencies in some meaningful way. So let's just say baseline profile. Right? And then I basically say here, what the plugin gives you is the new configuration called baseline profile. I'm saying my baseline profiles come from this project called baseline profiles. Of course, sorry, from this new module called baseline profiles which defines a bunch of uh, tests uh, uh, that are that provide the ability to generate these baseline profiles. So here, the test is doing something very simple. It says, uh, collect baseline profiles for this project, sorry, this application identified by com example jet news. All it's doing is press home and start activity and wait. It's just launching the app, waiting for it to load, and then just mm -hmm. doing that again and again. So, it's, so uh, it's pressing home, so it goes back to the device's home screen, right? And then right. starts the right. app from there. That's right. Um, and what I'll do is I'll basically add a few more arguments so this goes faster. So I'll say max iterations mm -hmm. equal to three, just because uh, you know I don't want to wait for longer. Uh, usually what collect does is it waits for 
the baseline profiles to be stable. So I think it basically runs the benchmark until mm -hmm. the baseline profiles haven't changed in between iterations because the way the generator works is basically asking the Android runtime to dump profile information at the end of every iteration. And it's seeing if any new information ended up in the profile when compared to the previous iteration. And once uh, new, no new information has ended up in the profile for a couple of iterations, it thinks that the profile is stable. But here, because uh, you know we are doing this live and we don't want to wait for like an, an indeterminate number of iterations, I'm just setting the maximum number of iterations to three. Uh, uh, and I'll just sync now. And now uh, we've, we've done that. And so if you look at the, uh, the comments uh, that come with the project, it also tells you the Gradle command to use to generate the baseline profile. So basically, what the plugin does is it sets up uh, a module that is the generator, and it basically sets up your app module as the consumer of the profile that the generator is producing, right? And then if you copy this uh, command that's in the, that's in the uh, comment and you paste it in, into, your, uh, into your terminal, here it's, you, can click, you can see that, it, uh, that the plugin added a task uh, called generate release baseline profile. Uh, you're generating a baseline profile for the release variant of the app. And you're passing a bunch of instrumentation arguments where you're saying, I'm o I only want to run the generation bits and not the other benchmarks in the project. So you're saying, just generate the baseline profile, but don't do anything else. Um, and so let's do that. And so here you can see uh, what will happen is uh, the baseline profile Gradle plugin will actually build a special variant of the app module that is uh, unminified, but still compiled with release. Because I think when you, the reason why it's doing that is because when you're building the profile, you want to be uh, as close to the source of truth of the source symbols as possible. You don't want to minify the sources. You don't want to run minification before generating the profile. You want to generate the profile first and then just run the minification step once uh, together with the profile and the source uh, source module. So they are obfuscated together. Um, so they're consistent. Otherwise, what, what might happen is that uh, you obfuscated the profile, and those methods are can't be correlated back to what is in the source module. If mm -hmm. that makes sense, and so uh, here we'll, you know, like it'll, it'll, and then I think, oh, the cool thing is actually it'll run a bunch of tests. So let actually let me uh, click on my device, and then you can see what's actually happening. So the test will actually kick off uh, these generator uh, tests, uh, and it'll run the app module for three times. It'll run the test uh, three for three iterations and then it'll dump the baseline profile results. So let's actually look at, as you can see, it's like launching the Jet News app, uh, and, and then it'll kill the process and do this uh, at least a couple of times. So let's actually see what it's doing. Oh, yeah, it's still executing, um, yeah, uh, iteration number two. And then hopefully it'll be done soon, and then we can see what actually happened. Uh, yeah, number three. If you're curious as to what's happening under the hood, you can use the tag benchmark in Lockhat to see what is happening for the actual generation phase under the hood. But I won't go into a lot of detail because it's sort of like not super, not not super, not any more informative. Uh, so if you notice, the 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 Gradle plugin also produced this handy log that says I copied the baseline profile to source release generated baseline profiles baseline prof.txt. And if you and if you go back to your code base, uh, all of a sudden uh, you'll see uh, app has a source release generated baseline prof.txt, and mm. and uh, and like here's the actual baseline profile that got generated. So I, I mean I didn't have to do anything. I just ran the test. The plugin sort of built the special variant of the app, ran the tests, uh, copied the results from the device back into Studio, and then copied it under the generated source set automatically. So this time, uh, when I now that I have generated baseline profile, I can just build assemble release like before, and I'll have the custom baseline profile that I just generated, alongside all the library baseline profiles that also existed from before, and now I can just like simply build a release variant of the app with all the baseline profiles that I care about, and uh, let's wait for that to complete. So now, after running the baseline profile creation, then the assemble release will pick up the the baseline That's profile right. and put it in the APK or the app bundle. That's right. That's right. And so um, once we once this is done, we can actually remember that number that we had from before, the number of rules that we saw in the the baseline profile uh, APK. We'll actually double check to see if the number has gone up now. 
So if you go to app build uh, outputs, no, no uh, it's outputs, actually APK, if you go to release, you click on release. This time assets, hold on. Let me just uh, dismiss this window. Oh, so if you go down uh, assets, um, text opt. Okay, this land are prof, we should see. So now that number changed to 9,000, right? We, 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 we had like 6,600 odd rules before. Uh, because of oh. all the custom baseline profiles that we added, the number of rules went up, right? So that's good. Uh, oh. And also notice that the rules have been transformed uh, uh, by using an obfuscation map. So basically, uh, given R8 sort of changed all the symbol names, uh, these rules uh, also have to be transformed so to sort of align with the symbol names. Uh, and here, the way this works is we use this obfuscation map that has a mapping from mm -hmm. the transformed symbol back to the source symbol. Like there's a heuristic, it's not perfect, but it's uh, it's uh, it's what we have. And so that's how we uh, we build this. And now um, let's actually uh, run a benchmark to see how good we are uh, right now. So let's close all the tabs. Uh, let, let's actually go to the baseline profile module again. And uh, there is a handy, class that's also generated by the template, which is the actual benchmark. So here you're compiling, you're comparing compilation.none, which is basically the app is not compiled at all. It's only JIT. And you're comparing that with compilation.partial. So you're saying this time install the baseline profile ahead of time and then run the benchmark. And then so we can see, uh, you know, um, you know, the difference. I'm just going to change the number of iterations to three again, because I, you know, it's, it's going to take a long time otherwise. Uh, and then I'm just going to run this test. And once you do this, the test already knows the relationship of the test with the target APK. Uh, so it'll sort of like rebuild the target APK if it needs to be rebuilt, install it on the device, and then run the test automatically without you having to handhold this relationship. And so anytime the app module changes, it knows to rebuild it automatically. Nice. Anytime your test changes, it knows how to, to rebuild it automatically. So we did. We did a lot of work to make sure that this integration is like super clean and ele elegant. Uh, there's uh, and so um, you should very trivially be able to just add a new module to your existing project and then just tie in a few bits, and then you should have an optimized APK. Oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> Something failed. Uh, uh, this might just be like a device error. We'll see. Execution task. What went wrong? Let's see. Wow, that sucks. Uh, oh, this is just a ADB. Yeah, uh, sometimes the connection to the device is a bit flaky. This is just DDM lib freaking out. So let's actually run the test again, and this time it'll, it'll hopefully pass. Uh, in the meantime, uh, someone is asking on the chat, is this not similar to how C or C++ code is compiled? It C++ code, uh, well, doesn't doesn't we don't do profile guided optimization for C++ code because we can just target assembly. Uh, but I think the compiler can do like a bunch of optimization passes and minify the code in a similar fashion. So some of it is similar, but not everything is similar uh, because we are sort of like executing managed code, right? Like there's a garbage collector running. We don't exactly know what your entry points are and all of that. So I think that's the that's the subtle difference. But yes, in, in general, we are doing something that's very close to what T and the C++ compiler will do. So here you can see that my test ran this time, thankfully. Uh, and also, you can see the difference between an uncompiled uh, benchmark and a compiled benchmark. Uh, so we're using Compose 1.5. Uh, and Compose 1.5 is uh, a, a lot better than Compose 1.4. So if, you, if, you, if you're using an older version of Compose, then you would see a huger, a, a bigger difference. Also, my device is a, a Pixel 6 uh, that's running like a Google Tensor and has like tons of RAM. So that's why you this difference is not as high as uh, as pronounced, but you can still see that we shaved like a cool, you know, like twenty like like twenty ish milliseconds, uh, or like give or take a 15, 15 millisecond off, of uh, you know time to first pixel. Notice this is only comparing time to first pixel. It actually doesn't wait for the fully loaded uh, uh, from the app's perspective, because uh, in Jet News, fully loaded might mean that you've loaded all the articles and the home container and a bunch of other stuff. I haven't even gone into all of that. I'm just measuring the time to first pixel. And the fact that you can sort of shave off 20 milliseconds off the time to first, first pixel tells you a lot. Like you can see the profiles are actually working already. Um, so that's part, that part is good. 
So now that we've done that, let's actually keep these numbers handy so we, we can have we can compare them with like as we make more as we make more progress later on. So like let me I'll just I just copied these numbers to a scratch uh, workspace so we can sort of revisit these numbers when we have something to compare against. Uh, also, when you click on these uh, uh, benchmark, uh, you can actually uh, see the uh, the actual traces. Uh, so you click on it and it shows you a perfecto trace. Aha, and this is something, we're there now. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, uh, so this is kind of nice. So if you can see. Um, Finally, colors. <laughs> yeah. So here you can see that uh, we have, interesting. Uh, <laughs> So this is this is a different app. Uh, this is not what this. Uh, uh, what we are looking for is Jet News. So let's actually see. Let's actually try and find. Wow. Ah, yeah, there it is. Yeah. I have an uh, I have an unrelated project, Com Rahul Rav, that, that threw me off for a second. Like, what what's going on? Uh, <laughs> can yeah. you uh, can you zoom in a bit? Because I think it's going to yes. be hard to read otherwise. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, so, like, if you see, if you notice, like, uh, what what macro benchmark also does is it, you know, and here you can see we're just literally waiting waiting for the first frame, and after that our, our benchmark's done. Like, we're not waiting for report fully drawn. We're just literally waiting for the first pixels for Jet News to be drawn, and that's why you're only seeing one, uh, like one one big frame here, and like none of the other things we sort of like factor in into the benchmark. Ideally, what you would do here is uh, in the benchmark that you wrote, you would wait for fully loaded, whatever your definition of fully loaded is, or you would insert a trace marker before and after fully loaded so you can sort of measure uh, that difference. And that will tell you a lot more about how your app is doing because that is, that is also a more real uh, number because right now the time to first pixel kind of doesn't even go into the network request that you might make or the disk load that you might mm -hmm. do to sort of like populate some information for the app, right? Like it's not doing any of that. It's literally saying uh, sh like what, how long does it, sh uh, does the app take to show the first pixel, which could just be a splash screen for all you care. And that's not a good enough number, but for Jet News, I know it doesn't use a splash screen. So I think like it's a pretty close, it's like a reasonable number for us to compare against, but ideally you would want to compare against uh, fully drawn. Um, I won't actually do the fully drawn wire up because it's sort of I've I've kind of shown you that before, and it's uh, as as interesting as it is. It's not very interesting. So this is like a good enough number for us to compare. Uh, also, I if you for those who noticed what happened when I clicked on this link, it opened uh, you know perfecto.dev. This is an experimental property in Iguana uh, that we've sort of that we're using. Ideally, what what it would do by default, it would it would just show you the Studio Profiler, which I. I'm not a big fan of. I like Perfetta UI because it gives you so much more information. And the cool thing with Perfetta UI is it gives you like a fully blown SQL query interface that you can just like write SQL queries against to see how long trace sections took. And you can also like slice and dice the slice and dice the UI in like many different ways. Maybe I can just like do another one of these sessions, just diving into Perfetto, just like exploring the query interface and doing a lot more of that. But today we won't go into that also. In, I don't know, I'll, I'll book you after this. So... To do the sequel one, After. you you sealed your fate, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's like twenty twenty four is approaching. So yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's actually. Uh, um, oh, the the reason why I actually brought this trace up uh, is because uh, if you, um, you you know if you have if you if you've not used Perfetto before, you use WASD uh, to sort of zoom in and zoom out to and and, and uh, like uh, sorry, uh, WNS to zoom in and zoom out and A and D to sort of uh, pan. Uh, and then it's a horizontal timeline, uh, time moves uh, left to right and so on. And so this is the process. Uh, the process that we're interested in is in Jet News. So what I'll do is I'll just like, there should be a way to start this somehow. Oh, oh I think they changed the UI now. Uh, I can I can, uh, I can pin this to the top. Uh, and um, also what I want is uh, actually, let's actually do the, this the old fashioned way. Uh, let's actually click on this uh, this slice, which is the app startup slice. I'll click on Mark. Why is it not doing anything? Hold on. Let me reload the page. My, wow, something's. Uh... I'm also using a Canary version of Perfetto, so <laughs> of course you are. Because why not? I'm I'm surprised you're not using a, a single commit <laughs> from the main <laughs> yeah. branch. <laughs> What, what do right, you mean main branch? You mean dev yeah. branch? 
chat news. Uh, yeah, all right. So if you, so what I did is I clicked on that slice, which is the app startup slice, and I'm just like going to scroll down, and you can see that our JIT pool is not super active. Like there's not much going on here. If I zoom in, like I mean, it's still doing some work. Uh, the garbage collector is doing some work here. You can see it's the heap task daemon, but the JIT thread pool um, is doing a little bit. But not 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 much. It's like literally the JIT that pool got attached to the app, but like there's nothing else happening. There's no JIT compilation happening. Uh, that that means your profiles are working. If you compare it to an app that doesn't have a profile, we would see a lot more JIT action because uh, the runtime has to compile more code to mm -hmm. speed things up, right? Especially um, if so, you use Compose, or does Compose ship with its own? Compose ships profiles. with some. Uh, it's like if you. So with even if Compose ships with baseline profiles, Macro Benchmark lets you like turn that off just mm -hmm. as a just as a thought experiment, and so you can actually see how bad Compose is without anything, right? Like, uh, it's all relative, of course. Uh, with, you would never see that in a in a real on a real device, but if you wanted to see that as a you know just as a as a point of comparison, then I think you can you can you can, you can get to that point. Um, so. All right, that that ends our perfetto section in, interlude of the talk. Let's actually go back to our IDE. Um, and so, uh, like 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 we saw these numbers, right? Like we are close to 199 median. I only ran this benchmark for three iterations. Ideally, I would run it for a few more to actually get like some confidence. Mm -hmm. Also, if you are running these benchmarks and you want uh, noise-free benchmarks, I would recommend that you flash like an AOSP image that doesn't have Google. Play services and the Play Store and a bunch of other stuff that like adds noise when you're running the benchmark because they might be doing background tasks that sort of like use up some of the big cores maybe sometimes. So, um, so there's like ways to get that. I think um, there's a blog post that uh, that we're going to publish to sort of like that talks talks about that in more detail. So, uh, so now we have our benchmark. We have our baseline profile generator. Now we're start going to start doing something uh, where. Uh, I'll show you uh, uh, some of the new improvements that we uh, made to the way baseline profiles actually work uh, in the new canary, uh, um, in the new, in the latest version of the Gradle plugin. So, so for that, uh, we need to update our Gradle plugin version. So we'll go back to libs.toml. We'll go back here. Oh, what is this? Oh, no, we'll, let's, let's switch that to that. That shouldn't change anything. It just uh, moves the version of the baseline profile Gradle plugin to 1.2.0 stable. Uh, which is what we want, and boo, the important <laughs> boo stable, uh, brave enough. You're not brave <laughs> enough. Um, and what we'll do here is uh, notice the Android Gradle plugin version. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll actually use whatever's uh, the tip of tip of free version of the Gradle plugin. What is the tip of free version? Uh, is it eight three eight three twelve? Eight uh, three zero alpha twelve, I think. Eight three zero alpha twelve. You're right. Uh, Let's copy that. All right, let's go there. Uh, I which version? Oh. Oh, hold on, I'm using Canary 12, so that should be fine. All right, let's sync. Yes, uh, this should also just work because uh, all I did was to change the version of AGP, um, uh, which is good. Um, so now that now that happened. Um, all right, so we have uh, baseline profiles uh, here. Um, so far, so good. So now what we'll do is we will, oh, before we go into that, uh, I, maybe I should, well, I'll, maybe I'll get back to that later, given if we have more time. I want to show you like one more feature that Macro Benchmark has, but let me just finish the, can I, the main. Can I ask you a question tying up mm -hmm. to what uh, someone wrote in the chat, which is, uh, they said that they, they would like to see the benchmark test running through uh, an authentication flow. Mm -hmm. Do Does it make sense to run, to create baseline profiles for something that is not just the uh, app startup, uh, but like going through common scenarios and, your, and use cases, for example, right? Yeah, because yeah. Because at the end Actually, of the day, you want to get as much coverage as possible. Right. That's a that's a really good question. Yes, so I think you want to do that. So for example, the Maps work workflow, uh, Google Maps is baseline profile generator. What it does is it goes to the home screen of Maps, enters a search term, goes to the navigation uh, options pane, and then goes into the nav display with with turn by turn directions, right? Like because that's the critical user journey for Google Maps, for example. 
Uh, and this assumes that the user has been authenticated. So for handling auth flows, what I would recommend is that you have a variant of the app that where auth is not an issue, where you have like hard-coded credentials through build config, or you have another flow where that just like bootstraps uh, the credentials that you want into the app. Or what I would also recommend is that if you notice our startup benchmarks, uh, here, if you look into the benchmark, it says measure repeated. Here, the, we have a setup block. The setup block can actually like use ADB commands to copy credentials over to like a well-known directory mm -hmm. that the app expects to find it in. And then that can be the credentials that you use uh, for the duration of the benchmark. And that will happen every single time that the benchmark runs. So you're guaranteed that the app will have those credentials and then you're not optimizing a less frequent flows like login flows because that's not the goal of the baseline profile. The goal of the baseline profile should be to capture things that the users are like, likely going to do. Does that answer your question? Yep. Okay. It is just the one scenario though that generates it, right? You don't generate, you don't run multiple scenarios. I mean, you can do uh, multiple you can... things in the one. Yeah. No, no, no. You can run multi. You can write multiple tests, oh, okay. and they can all, uh, and they they'll all be merged into the canonical baseline profile. So essentially, what happens is, the compiler will run a process that is similar to the manifest merge process. Uh, so you know how uh, libraries have their own manifest and the app has its manifest and uh, AAPT will run a manifest merger, build the one canonical manifest before it starts compiling the manifest, right? Uh, baseline profiles go through the same thing. So each test can contribute uh, a baseline profile. These All these profiles are merged with library profiles and then we build the one canonical profile at the point at which the app is being built, uh, the release version of the app is being built. Does that answer the question? Mm -hmm. Oh, this, is, this is cool. So you will, you will probably cover, let's say, you know, like a, a handful of most uh, common user flow, user path. Right. And that, and then you get the the maximum speed up on those. That's right. Uh, so you, this I is, mean, you know, what, hmm? please. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I mean, I would, this is one of those conversations that we had always with Sebastiano about, you know, how analytics and tracking can be an incredible tool for this kind of stuff. So the yep. more you know about how your users use your app, the more then you can focus the performance effort, right? The speed up effort. Right. Because then you say, okay, people are... We, we didn't know people are going in this screen so much because mm -hmm. reasons. Mm -hmm. So make let's make it faster, right? right? So that's also something that is, uh, again, you know, somebody thought about the login flow, but then, you know, you, you shouldn't think about that as a, oh, it, it happens at every start, right? Because, well, you log in once, right? So exactly. that, that, takes you to okay where is the the meat where are the where is where are the users right right uh, i mean so i, think, I like uh, the and, idea that you can build a few of them yeah i think analytics helps a lot because then you know which parts of the app are being used but i think intuitively also like let's say you're an e-commerce app the checkout flow may not be as frequently used as a search part of the e-commerce app but it's still super important that people can check out quickly and they don't have to wait right because yeah. that literally turns into like that, that. That literally converts to like real money. Because uh, money, unless the user yeah. buys for un, unless the user buys something, you're not getting paid, uh, or the company is yeah. not making money. So there are uh, so I think those are like the load bearing parts of the app that you want to sort of like build profiles for, and I think that's uh, the part that can be covered by critical user journeys. And so this this helps in two ways. A you're sort of testing your critical user journeys and you're making sure that they cannot break because literally if they break, the test will fail and then you won't be able to generate a profile. And then so you're sort of like covering your bases to make sure yeah, that nice. A, the app is good and then B, you have profiles that are covering your critical user journey. So you're sort of hitting two birds with one stone. Or, that's actually uh, cool. Uh, so that's, so, um, so, so yeah. So I think going back to our, uh, to what I was trying to show off is now that we have a, a baseline profile module, um, uh, what what's what's actually happening under the hood is the there's two parts right the APK is consuming baseline profiles generated by the baseline profiles generator which is this module called baseline profiles uh, so here uh, it has a baseline profiles block that says use connected devices equal to true which means uh, it's actually using the device that I have connected uh, over ADB you can also generate baseline profiles using uh, you know ATD devices which is uh, Android test devices or 
Gradle managed devices. So you don't even need a physical device because these tests can actually run on an emulator that's headless, right? So mm -hmm. uh, you can do that if you want it, but like, uh, because I don't want to run on an ATD right now, I'm just using a connected device. That's why I have this set to true. true. Uh, I will also uh, show off some new things here. So like if, uh, let's go uh, after the Android block here, uh, on the consumption side also, I can say uh, baseline profiles and I can configure how uh, baseline profile can happen. Uh, the, the, the files are consumed. So uh, if you notice in the app module, uh, if you go into source, we have a release and the release variant has a baseline profile, right? Like it's the release variant source. So baseline profiles are variant specific. So if you have, you know, a, a dog food version of the app, and they're a full prod version of the app. You want like they may have different code paths because the dog food version may be having some new source code that's not in the production variant. So the profiles are specific to a variant, right? Uh, and so what the baseline profile uh, plugin does is it basically uh, gives you um, a file that is uh, that it adds the baseline profile to the source set of the release variant. So release generated baseline profiles is part of the source set of the release variant and it just adds the file in. So AGP can discover uh, that baseline profile and build it into, into the APK. Um, and so on the app side, however, I have some uh, things that I can tweak to make this process more streamlined. So let's look at that in a bit more detail. Uh, hold on, where is my... Yeah. Mm. What am I looking for? Okay, yeah, so let's actually do this. So let's say baseline profiles output directory. Um, here, I'm just going to say um, actually, because this is Scotland DSL, it's not Ruby anymore. <laughs> Thank God. I'm <laughs> I know there are people that, that hate the Kotlin DSL, uh, but <laughs> I, I, for one, like to know what's happening when I type something. So just to show what 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 are some of the options available on the consumption side for the baseline profile Gradle module, I'll delete the release folder that has the custom baseline profiles. And then I'll add a property here that says the output folder for the baseline profile out, basically the files the location where they should be copied is dollar is basically like walk two directories up and copy to the source main baseline profile. And I'll tell you why I'm doing that uh, in a bit. So what I'll do is I'll add a new directory here and it'll be the baseline profile source set. And so that'll, that'll be the source set that these files will be copied into. So let's actually sync first. And um, let's, let's actually, hold on, go back into well, no, this guy. Let's actually build generate baseline profile again, like we did before. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, asking the uh, the build plug the baseline profile Gradle plugin to rebuild the baseline profile with that new configuration that I changed in the app side. So what it's going to do, rather than copy it into the generated uh, folder, I'm asking it to copy it into the source main baseline profiles folder, so I can kind of do some more things that I want to. So I I'll, let me so I don't want to you know, reveal the surprise. Uh, <laughs> uh, let, let's, let's, let's just wait this to be done and uh, let, let, wait for this to be done and then I can show things off. Um, so while, so right now it's again doing the same thing. So if you look at my, um, you know, studio window, it'll basically run the same test that you saw before. Uh, um, yeah, if I turn, let me turn on mirroring again. Uh, and then you should be able to see that it'll build a new uh, version of the test and then it'll deploy it to the you know to the device and it'll run those critical user journeys three times because I set the maximum number of iterations to three, and then it'll dump the contents of the profile into the source main baseline profiles if everything works fine. So right now it's like this stuff iteration number one. Uh, let's just wait for this to be done, and then we should be able to see what happened. How much time do we have left? I'll, I'll go faster now. Uh, 15, 20 minutes. Okay, that okay, okay. That should be enough, I think. I'll go really fast. Good performance. It's fine. If, right. if you want to finish faster. five minutes later, it's okay. It doesn't matter. All right. Uh, so, oh, it's still running the test. Um, okay. So uh, I think it finished all the tests. Uh, and then it caught, oh. as you notice, 
what happened here, it copied things to source main baseline profiles instead of source main release generated, right? Like I changed the output directory. Um, so that's that's one thing. So now uh, this file ended up here. So that's cool. That's uh, step one. I also, what I also want to do is I want to show off like uh, the new Dex layout optimizations that happened uh, that, that I want to, like that, that can, that, that you can turn on. So currently, if you remember, if you go into app, uh, you know, if you go into the build folder, if you go into outputs APK uh, release and you have the release APK, notice you have one classes.dex file, which is a 1.7 megs uh, mm -hmm. in size. Uh, what Dex layout optimizations actually do is I, I'll talk while I'm actually typing so we can speed things up. So I'll say Dex layout optimization equal to true. Uh, and then I think there's also a rewrite uh, baseline, rewrite equal to true. And then just, just to be doubly, doubly sure that this is actually happening, uh, I'm just going to set this uh, experimental options because I'm not sure if. Uh, uh, if that takes care of it, but I'm just being extra paranoid because I don't have time to double check. Uh, oh, it's fine. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so I basically what I did is in my build Gradle KTS, I added uh, a couple of new options. I said turn on Dex layout optimizations, and turn on baseline profile rewriting. And what this happen what happens here is uh, let me like talk while I'm actually building, so we waste less time. Um, uh, now that this is done, what do I need to do? Yes, I do need to make one more change. So here, in my actual generator, uh, hold on. Where's that? Bench? Where's the generator? Uh, yeah, here I just need to because this is a, a startup. Uh, I'm just going to pass the next option that I'm going to say, including including startup profile equal to true. And what this does is it's saying that this critical user journey is actually a startup critical user journey. It's like it's important that this is like very likely the first thing the user will do after after the launch of the app. This is uh, part of that specific critical user journey set. So now that I've have have these three changes, uh, let's actually build it, and I can explain uh, once I kick off a build what uh, Dex layer optimizations actually are. So let's. Uh, See if this is fine. Okay, it's so while while it's building, what Dex layout optimizations will do is uh, if you have uh, if you run R8 and you have an APK, uh, R8 will shrink uh, the size of the, as much bytecode as possible, and you will end up with one classes Dex. But here we are asking, uh, we are basically telling R8 what the important uh, classes and important methods for startup specific code code journeys are. Uh, the, these are things that the user is likely to do likely going to do immediately after the launch of the app. And what R8 will do is it will extract all the code paths that touch the startup critical user journey into its own DEX file and move all non-startup code into a separate DEX file. So we can sort of aggressively load only that code in the startup DEX and not worry about any, anything else. And essentially what happens then is you sort of like have fewer page faults when you're running the APK, when like the system is like mem like memory mapping uh, the class files uh, um, and things like that, so you basically end up with far fewer page faults. So here, this notice it said very cool. Yeah, notice it said I mean, that you have I, a. I have I have a question before we move uh -huh. forward. So, is it also a smaller DEX file so it loads faster? Yes. Even yes yes. Ah, this is brutal, yes. man. This is so cool. So, <laughs> so now, uh, uh, so now I, I said. Uh, so here, notice in source main, uh, uh, you know, in the app, now you have two files. Uh, it's, uh, you don't have one baseline profile. You also have a startup prof.txt, which is what AGP will ask R8 to use. And then I turned on Dex layer optimization to do. So let's actually build our release APK now and see what happened. Uh, assemble release, right? Like so, now I'm kicking off release, and what should happen is that R8 gets that new startup profile and builds that minimal classes.dex file. And if everything works, uh, when I use APK inspector, you should see not one class file, but two class files, two classes.dex files. One which is the minimal classes.dex uh, file, me? and then the other one. Uh, and the other one has all the non startup code. Let's uh, let's see that in action. Man, that's cool. Uh, I lo I lost you for a second. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. Um, all right. Let's. Do, we did that. Let's go. Let's go back into build. Uh, 
Let's close all our windows just to be extra sure. APK release, uh, and now we have app release APK. Notice that. Notice what Aha. happened. We have two. Nice. Notice the classes that text got super small, and the other thing. So instead of like one 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 classes.dex file with 1.7 megs, we have a smaller classes.dex which is 700k, and a larger classes2.dex which is uh, 1019.k. So we kind of like split it like uh, you know uh, by a uh, yeah. by a significant percentage, and now we have two. And uh, if you run the same benchmark now, this time with dex layer optimizations turned on. Uh, you should see us, like, even though we are only measuring time to first pixel, which is like not even exercising a lot of the code that uh, the app needs mm. to show the, the to show that uh, to show all the uh, bits of the screen that you actually load. Uh, you can still see a, a drop in that number. So hopefully, once these benchmarks are running, uh, you should be able to uh, see the difference, uh, like when we report the metrics. And again, these metrics I'm only running for three iterations. Ideally, you want to run for a few more, and you want to wait for report fully drawn. So, like, don't use time to first pixel as a as a metric because you will actually see significant shifts uh, in the report fully drawn case where you're doing you're exercising a lot more user code. Mm -hmm. uh, for the first pixel, actually, the 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 percentage of platform code to the percentage of user code is uh, is actually not that high. Uh, as in, like, it's high because there's more platform code than user code. But for report fully drawn, we actually do a, a lot more work on on the user side, especially in Compose. Uh, and so, um, so here you can see like Ooh, that number my, okay. shifted. Yeah, it shifted. You can even though you're only seeing time to first pixel, we dropped almost another 15 milliseconds, which is almost the same amount of improvement that you saw by adding a baseline profile. So, uh, what what I'm trying to show you uh, is that just by turning on this extra optimization, which is uh, Dex layout optimizations, you can sort of like double your startup again, uh, and so uh, like you you can sort of like get better better num better numbers, and importantly, I need to, uh, I need to uh, do this stuff. <laughs> in my app. I need to start. But doing even this, your man. your apps have ads, so whatever you you no, say. No, 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 no. But, but, <laughs> it, but it's going to speed yeah, up a I, web view. So no, I need I I I mean the other apps. Uh, but I I was wondering actually, Rahul. Uh, speaking of uh, web views, does this have any impact on on that? I don't think so because it's not. Uh... It may not have impact on the web view itself, but it'll have impact on if you're using JavaScript bridges bridges in the web view. Uh, mm -hmm. It can impact that. So I think if you have a lot of like Java code that the web view will call into, then that will get affected. And the cool thing is. I mean, look at the difference, right? We started off with like we were close to 198 when we started off. We shaved off like another significant percent, right? And all I did was turn on a new version of R8, turn on Dex layer optimization, change like one flag in my benchmark, and it just like new version. <laughs> new a newer version. version. Yeah, sure. It's newer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's. Oh, but but this is this is actually very impressive because as you mentioned, the effort. It's pretty pretty small. I mean, you just need to know where to tweak, and I guess yeah. that's the that's the the the, the, the serious part. Yeah. Um, so I have a like a more like a day by day uh, work question. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion? How how often should I update the the, the R eight commit thing? Because uh, now you have a like a hard code. Oh, shut up, Sebastian. Like, oh, sorry. Like, I'm, I'm, no, no, no. You're right. You're absolutely right. No, uh, people commit more often than daily. So more often than yes. That. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. But because there is no uh, like snapshot uh, version that I uh, that I can use. So I need to use the commit and hard code the commit, right? Mm -hmm. So there is no dash latest. No, there is there is there is a latest is also. There is a latest ephemeral that points to whatever the latest commit is. If you want. Oh, wow. No, that's yeah. okay. Perfect. But that's okay. not um, very go... repeatable build. It's more yeah, like yeah. Sebastiano, uh... Sebastiano, Sebastiano. <laughs> you are you are just, this is the nit, nit, nitpicking now. That's, it's uh... like now it builds. Now it doesn't. <laughs> Who knows? Is it gonna build? I mean, it's but like, there is a, there is no uh, equivalent to the snapshots on Android X Dev, right? Uh, we do, yeah. That, that's literally what the storage main is. Like, so if you go ah, back okay. to our settings, 
So this is literally the equivalent to ah, okay, the snapshot okay, yeah, yeah. dev. Uh, so we have. So what like what R8 does is every time it builds, it start, like writes to a cloud storage bucket. So that's why you are sort of using R8 releases bucket, and like that's where the uh, artifacts end up in. Um, uh, one other thing that I want to talk about Dex layout optimization is actually we did something even cleverer than you think. Uh, so what happened before, like in the in the past when we generated a baseline profile and when, when we compiled it. When R8 would minify your code base, we would only know about it after the fact that it happened because we were looking at the obfuscation map. So the obfuscation map has the information that says, for this symbol, uh, this is the source symbol. But that mapping is actually super lossy. And the reason why it's very lossy is because obfuscation maps were never meant to be used in that way. Obfuscation maps are always like stack trace to stack trace transformers with line number information. You can't just go from symbol to symbol and the reason why that is true because R8 may actually like even combine classes and create synthetic classes because it thinks like you know these classes are related. So a very common example is that uh, if you have a base class and you have two derived classes, R8 may create like this one synthetic uh, implementation with both methods from two derived classes into one synthetic class. And then you can't actually map from the synthetic class to a source class because like there is no obvious mapping, right? Like it depends on which line was met, which like which method was invoked, and like correspondingly which which line number was invoked. And so the obfuscation map becomes lossy, and we end up dropping that profile. But starting AGP 8. Uh, 8.3, which is Iguana, what we do, what Profgen, which is the Baseline profile compiler. What it does, it cooperates it like R8 and baseline profile compiler like co cooperatively transform the code base, so they are aware of each other's transformations at every step of the way. So R8 essentially asks Profgen to say, "Hey, give me a list of like the source symbols that you are aware of, and I will transform those source symbols appropriately given my transformations that I'm making as I'm making them, and then." the the source baseline profile gets converted to the actual baseline profile. Uh, after uh, after the transformations by R8, and R8 will do things like uh, horizontal class merging, which I just talked about, and it'll basically transform the source profile into the the minified profile, the profile with all the minified symbols, uh, with the minified dex files, and then Profgen can just compile them together and throw them into the APK without any loss of profile information. So the improvement that you're seeing is actually a combination of like we just made baseline profile compilation so much more better. And we have dex layout optimization, so we have that minimal startup dex that you saw, uh, which is uh, you know what, uh, which is the uh, the parts of the app that are like identified by a startup profile, and then in uh, by by using that in combination, we shaved off, we gave you back like another huge win that you originally saw from baseline profiles. So if you haven't done baseline profiles at all, if you combine all these techniques, you will see almost like a 50% improvement in app startup without wow. like you having changed anything else significantly, right? This is, you know, not changing any architectural uh, code in the APK itself. So it can be pretty significant. Uh, all the all these things do add up a lot, and it do and these and you know the the device may not reflect it, but like if you use, uh, you know, the median Android device that the average user uses, you can see those numbers uh, shift quite significantly. You folks are not playing around with this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. We have a question from the chat. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So one question from the chat, because I need to shut up. Otherwise, it's going to be it, like three hours. Yeah. Uh, is it normal to not have any optimizations at all after implementing baseline profiles? I'm facing this one in one of my apps, and I have no idea what might be going wrong. Uh, you can be. There can be many things going wrong. Um, um, I think I would like I would just like check the profile. Uh, uh, I would like check the version of the tools we made significantly. We 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 improved uh, the debuggability experience with baseline profiles. Use the canary. Uh, 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 use use the use the latest version of the tools when possible. Also, be advised that when you're measuring uh, when you're benchmarking uh, things with baseline profiles, we can't improve like network calls, right? Like network calls are something that the backend is like fulfilling. We have no control on that. So if you are Talking to a network, uh, if you're making a network call on startup, and that 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 number, uh, the time for that uh, call is not de non-deterministic, it's going to affect your benchmark because if you're waiting for the content uh, from the network call to return to lo to finish loading the screen, then you have to like subtract that time somehow, or you have to fake that data 
in the benchmark so you can sort of like get an apples to apples comparison that you can sort of reproduce every single time. And so I think uh, the answer is either like a better benchmark uh, or uh, you know just use the newer version of tools and just uh, make sure that your uh, that your profiles are actually taking effect on the device. Thank you. Um, I'm I'm thinking about the um, you know what you just said about network call when you launch the app, and I'm and I'm thinking, how does it work when you use things like? Uh, remote config or crash analytics or, or some, you know, you have Google Analytics that are, those are things that you don't, so they they are part of your app, but they mm -hmm. belong in a, this different world where you have you know, external libraries that serves you in the app. So yeah. will that be something that, you know, that, that will affect the benchmark? In, um... I mean, it might, it might, right? It depends on how uh, you're integrating with the library. If you're doing uh, what Google Analytics will do, will, like will do for you by default, uh, and if you're like loading al analytics even before the app has fully started up, and you have shown the critical user journey, and you're like not, it's, and it's not lazy, um, where like basically things that should be lazy, um, you know, like you should make sure that they are actually lazy, and you're not eagerly loading them. Uh, another constant problem that I see for people who use dependency injection is that like things that should be lazy are not lazy and then they they'll like create the DAG graph very eagerly uh, mm -hmm. or you know your dependency injection graph very eagerly um, and and you have to remember that the application startup is the same when you're executing a background job versus when you're actually showing UI so actually delaying things uh, until the activity it can be drawn is actually a huge app startup improvement because there is no reason for you to sort of like warm up uh, you know, your bitmap storage and your bitmap thread pools. Uh, if you're not going to show bitmaps because when all you're running is a background job, for example, right? There's no yeah, point doing all of that work. So you have to be extremely careful about things that are in your startup path. And the way I verify that that is the case is I just add trace sections around every single component that I that I add to my app. And then that way I can sort of like either disregard them by eliminating that the amount of time that took in Perfetto, or I can sort of like delay them and not have app startup be affected by that component. When you, when you say adding um, a, a tracer, um, will it will it be like some something that because I don't remember how we did it in the yeah. in the previous. Uh, will it be like something that you call as a method? Let's say before and after I do some you know library library dot init. That's uh, right. That, Something yeah. like that, and Something then like it's going to yeah. be... Okay. Yeah. So you basically call trace.begin and trace.end around the library.init, and then you know exactly how long that took. And then that way, you can sort of like... like you can, you can actually see... We, once you start looking at perfect traces, you'll be surprised that you sort of like never even considered the cost of these things that you like rely on. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're like, yeah. it's in your face, and you're like, oh my God, I didn't realize... Uh, but, so much of my app startup is this, right? And, and then you so, have to care. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is this is something. So it's a similar experience, or I imagine it has a similar experience. The first time you turn strict mode on, right? Yeah. The first time you run. So you are a developer. You are fancy. Then you turn strict mode on, and it's awful. You are reading on the main thread here. You are leaking stuff on the other side, and I'm like. How? What are? What's going on here? And now, as, as Sebastiano said, and now you need to care because you have those logs, and now it's there. <laughs> Even this is a discrete violation. You need to fix this. And then you know you st you start actually going around trying to understand where are you not closing the closable, you know, the thing that we were discussing the other day, Sebastiano. Right. Oh yeah, you have a a closable that it's not closed, and now you need to understand. So, but. A question. So the the tracers, the, so the trace uh, begin and end, mm -hmm. uh, they don't affect the runtime, right? So I can use them. They're in a... very. Uh, they're they're like they they do affect it, but like at a, at a nanosecond level. They I think they had oh. like a a few nano like a thousand nanoseconds worth of overhead. Uh, okay. We have other ways of other ways to reduce that overhead if you want, if you're interested. But I think uh, that that little bit of overhead is not going to change that much. Um, and so I think uh, as a means to know what is bad about your app, I would say just look at a perfecto trace, 
my favorite example is someone who does who says like no 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 i don't like keep the main thread uh i don't like uh keep keep the main thread busy i do everything on a background thread but there is this like dot wait call on the on the main thread somewhere that's waiting for the background thread to return and i'm like yeah that's like that's like an implicit sure. block right you're just waiting for things to happen so you can load the screen <laughs> and i said effectively what you're doing is like you're bla- blocking startup so even though perfetto looks like nice and clean like there's a there's an implicit like on complete somewhere that's sort of like delaying everything and so that's something that you want to avoid right you want to have uh you know like offline storage that sort of like populates the ui aggressively while you're sort of like reloading from the network and like doing things in parallel uh, but they can delay the reload to a network after the first uh, few pixels have been rendered so the app is like not blocking and like not showing a loading spinner so there's there's architectural decisions that you need to do but this will sort yeah. of make them more more obvious so yeah uh, but uh, i agree because you know having a local storage that just shows you something while you are fetching stuff from the network that's a decision that's a yes. that's one of those you that's not something that you say oh yeah yeah let, let's do it it's going to take 5 minutes no that has implications right so again it's a conscious decision for a, for a team to do that because you know you just throw a, a circular progress bar in there and yolo it and it's going to be yeah. faster than you know let's think about the log storage and you know refresh and invalidate cache and things like yeah. that so um i mean i think that's also when you become you go from being a toy app to like a real app that with like real yeah. like you know like with with very cognizant and pragmatic decisions about like what happens in startup and like i think you should treat your startup and like your critical user journey is almost as this is like uh, you know a golden set of events that need to happen and i will not allow any other events to pollute this critical user journey because like it is really that important uh and if you as, if you treat it that way um then that that's how uh, those paths uh, you know those critical user journeys remain fast and i think writing tests like this that show you the perfect trace is exactly and that that tell you exactly what's happening uh is actually very cool and uh, you can even extend macro benchmark to emit like custom metrics that say here's how long this custom trace section that i that i know the ad that the app emits took and if that regresses by some number you can sort of like throw in a throw throw an exception and like fail the test if you really want to so those are things that you can even do to to guard things like to guard the oh like i i you know i fat fingered like this network call in this in this in this critical section that i should not have uh, and like that's not something that you should be allowing um i'll show you one last thing uh, if mm-hmm. we have time yeah uh, this should only take like 2 yeah, minutes sure. Uh, sure um so in our default like one the one thing the one extra one other thing that we added is that we added uh we improved attributability of performance uh, uh in 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 when running b- benchmarks so if you do uh well, actually this is groovy code so let me fix that actually i have uh, a snippet uh if you're using uh, a benchmark uh, 1.2 you should be able to do something like this which is i am saying turn on i'm turning on method tracing while the benchmark is running and what that does is along with a perfect trace which is sort of like super high level on like or super low level depending on how you see it uh it'll tell you like everything that's happening in the system that uh, you know including like page faults and all of that but it doesn't give you uh which part of my code is actually running and like it doesn't tell you exactly like it doesn't tell you like which line of code uh uh is 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 relevant right Uh, but if you want to see the relative cost of lines of code in your app you turn on something called method tracing and this is a an, this is an test instrumentation argument in a newer version of benchmark we'll just like give you an api to turn this on programmatically if you want but this is the way to do it right now and when you run the same benchmark uh let's just run it with uh, with uh, compilation.nan so you can actually see this uh, so when you do this um essentially what will happen is while running the benchmark we'll also turn on method tracing in art and it'll tell you the relative cost of like every single method and it'll give you like a nice flame chart of like the costs uh in in the different threads uh and you should be able to see that cool visualization let's uh let's wait for the benchmark to run uh, let's actually go into the build this should there should be is like yeah, it's done it's done did it actually do that it i don't says see it says it did uh i don't see the actual hold on i think i may have um this oh I think I just added it to the wrong place. Hold on. I added it to the app. It should should it should it should be added to the test. I'm an idiot. 
Yeah, no. Um, uh, hold on. Let me go to the test, and then that's where it needs to it needs to be here. Uh, and also, um, second time's a charm, right? All right, this time it should actually show you a link, uh, and also, better yet, it should actually show you the actual file. So the good news is when you run uh, a test, uh, the test results are automatically copied over uh, to the on the host side. So if you go to generate it, maybe not. I, I forget which which folder. I think you should see outputs connected Android test output, um, and then that should actually show you uh, the actual files that were copied over. So every time you run the benchmark and we actually see the benchmark results, um, you should actually see. So here you can see method traces uh, that got extra that that got generated, and so you, you have the the actual method trace here. Right. Uh, let's actually go into the op open that folder. So let's actually open that folder in Finder. Um, we have that method trace. Um, if you can't see the text on the screen, it's not very relevant. Uh, what I will do, however, I'll go into profiler.firefox.com, and you might be wondering why I'm opening Firefox Profiler. It'll it'll become more evident in a second. Um, you can actually click on the method trace, uh, and let's, let's actually go here. Let's. Um, this is Perfetto. This is the method trace. Uh, notice the method traces are a lot bigger because they have a lot more information. I'll just like drag and drop it here, and boom, um, you nice. actually have nice. a flame graph of actual user code uh, of like all the things that Compose is doing. Or, like this is obviously uh, compiled code, but if you ran yeah, minified, this is the minified code, right? Like if we actually uh, installed, uh, hold on, let me actually do that. So. Well, actually, let me actually change something quickly. So here, if I go into apps, uh, um, and I can just say for release, I'll just uh, I'll just uh, no. set it to false. So yeah. I can actually see uh, that information. And I'll just read on the benchmark. Um, all right, let's run that again. And the cool thing is uh, the same folder uh, that you saw before uh, that, uh, that that had this method trace should have. Uh, Okay, where, where is the finder window? Did I kill it? Oh yeah. Uh, we see. Oh, yeah. It's, it's there. Yeah. So, the, I mean, like, so Studio will clear this folder every single time, and it'll copy the fresh results from the device automatically to this folder, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then you can sort of like drag and drop the files as you see fit. And uh, the really nice thing, uh, so we added support uh, in Firefox Profiler uh, for method traces. Uh, so, like, let's actually take um, let's actually take this uh, method trace. And drag and drop it here, and now you should be able to see if you click on flame chart. Hopefully, you can see a lot. Oh no, 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 no! This is not so. What? How is this even possible? Try. Uh, hold on. Mean if I did I do the right thing? And if I equal to false? Oh, this is uh, the profile. Is it the profile? No, 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 no. It's the the app one. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I think, but sure I have was. to. Change. Sure. Yeah. Let me. Did you find a bug? Right again. <laughs> No, I mean probably maybe the, the in Firefox Firefox is caching things. No, no, no. I think it's uh, AGP is not pushing the debug variant. Well, actually, hold on. I need to build the. Maybe I need to build the. Yeah, the I was thinking it might be a caching. Yeah. So let me just like reinstall the uh, APK with with, with, with minification turned off. Ah, uh, of course I need to stop the Gradle, kill the Gradle demon now. Because I had the uh, tenacity to kill the demon, or try and try and stop the process from happening. How dare um, you? How dare me? <laughs> um, but the cool thing is, with method traces, you should like it should be the flame chart should be really should make it very clear on like what the the height of the frame graph will tell you, height of the call stack, and uh, the amount the amount of time uh, uh, that that you see horizontally will tell you how long something relatively took obviously method tracing has overheads so don't uh, use method tracing and don't try and correlate with uh, because like because uh, the the amount of time it takes because we are actually doing every single method we are monitoring entry and exit of every single method art will actually uh, not uh, turn off a bunch of optimizations that, that should be turned on uh, in in when you're executing the app for real but what should happen is uh, that you can see, uh, you know, um, 
like relative in relative terms what the expensive parts of the call stack are and then you can sort of like dive into that and see like why it's expensive so let's see now let's go back into the folder um let's hope this actually has more information but i mm, No, something's definitely off. Well, some, um, yeah, I'm still seeing minified symbols, which seems rather wrong, but like mm. you can see that, uh, you know, like that, that this composable, whatever this is, it took like, uh, you know, it took this long and then you should be able to sort of like dive into that and you can just like zoom into that. You can say, uh, focus on function oh, nice. and then it'll just like focus into that area and then you should be able to see the relative uh, you know, costs of like each uh, subsequent method in the call stack, and if if you if you turn and those off are a, those are com those are composable. Yeah, these are actual like composable calls. This this is all your code, so you should be able to see the relative costs, and then you can even like slice and dice that in different ways. So you can say um, you can only you can sort of like hide all uh, hide things that you don't care about. Uh, you can show things that you don't care about. You can also see threads like every track. These are all the threads that are like in your in the app. So you can see there's like some some coroutines. Uh, the fact that you're seeing WM that there's obviously work manager doing some stuff. Uh, there's like some binder uh, stuff that's happening, which is interesting. Emoji compat. Uh, and then there's emoji compat initializer. Mm -hmm. And so um, yeah, so like uh, another thing that you can see. Uh, what uh, um, one one last thing that I'll show you, and I'll stop uh, my spiel. <laughs> um, <laughs> Man, you're gonna. Wait. I was gonna say you're gonna run out of material for the next episode, but I know you won't. No, never. <laughs> I don't think. I mean, he uh, just pulled this Firefox profiler out of nowhere. Oh yeah, we also have this. What the hell? I mean, <laughs> where this thing is coming from? So you know, uh, UI dot uh, uh, perfetto. Yeah, I think it's UI dot perfetto yeah. dot dev. If you go there, um, uh, if you and like you click on this perfetto trace. Um, and if you zoom into the actual, if you go into our our process, which was uh, blah, 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 where is it? Where's the Android startup, right? Like let's actually like, let's actually zoom. In. Oh, no. just let me click. Oh, okay. I marked it, highlighted it, and Jet News is here. So if you actually go in 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 here, if you see bind application, bind application is when the platform is trying to bind. Uh, and create an instance of the application subclass that you have. Uh, notice something interesting. You you loaded a bunch of resources here. But I don't know, but uh, in 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 make application, this is the Android X dot startup class, and it's initializing work manager during app startup. So imagine if you actually delayed work manager initialization outside of application on create uh, using the lazy initializer, you would save this much work in the critical apps uh, startup section. And then if you zoom in further, uh, you should be able to see uh, emoji compat initializer also. So this is like a nice way to see all the things in the application class, like in the in the startup routine. And the way- yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. This is so cool. I mean, look yeah. at that. I mean, you have a, like a very clear idea of what's going on when you start up the app. Yes. And so you like by adding these custom trace sections, you can actually say, why is work manager even running on startup? Like it should not be because it should be delayed until like, I have background work to be enqueued or you know something else, right? Yeah. So I can make a very trivial change to the app, uh, change work manager's eager initialization to lazy initialization, and then the slice just disappears from your app startup, which is super nice. You can do this something similar cool. for emoji compat because you only want to show emojis. Like you only want emoji compat when you actually want to show emojis. You don't want to do that eagerly, um, and and so on and so forth, right? And so I think that's the that's the part that I was talking about. And the way this works is if you go to like uh, Android X startup initializers and if you read, read the code base, let's actually do that right now. Uh, so if you go to app startup initializer, app initializer. Um, so if you see, it's actually doing, uh, hold on, where's trace? Uh, yeah, so it's actually saying, is tracing enabled? Where's it using is tracing? Yeah. Notice it's doing a trace dot begin section and a trace dot end section at the end. It's like basically mm -hmm. it's like surrounding the the startup initializer with a trace, so exact it knows exactly how long something took. So it's like ending 
uh, the trace. So it's like nice. basically surrounding it with the begin and end section. So you actually see this nice like UI and you can tell exactly yeah. how long something took. Wow. I mean, this, more people need to know this. I'm mean, serious about this because this is basic. It's advanced stuff, but it's a basic requirement yeah. to actually build something that doesn't suck. So, okay. So, we, yeah, we need to do something, Sebastian, about this. <laughs> you mean more <laughs> Rahul come, episodes? We to, <laughs> yeah, we need to come up with a series or something like, you know, like, I don't know. We need to come up with a catchy phrase, like a, a, a catchy name and things like that. Because this is so cool, but I know so little about the stuff. You know, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This is great. Yeah, happy to help. Uh, yeah, th th that's all I had for today. I just hope to cover <laughs> Dexlayer yeah. organizations and a bunch Dude, of Dude, we, we have, there is so much that we need to come back to and expand on. <laughs> He just yeah, like but, you know, came here, dropped the bomb, and like, oh, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> no, yeah, you're not. We, we, have you're not. The, we have people in the chat. We have people in the chat saying, you know, something. Where it's common in every app. This is, this is what I mean, right? This is every app. You know, this work manager initialization, the emoji, and Firebase, and, you know, every every The five analytics library. SDKs that you have yeah. to put yeah, in the app. Every, <laughs> So that's the idea. Every every single external library that says, "Oh, you just throw this in the app on create and yolo," because you know we don't care, and then and, and then you and then you have like a sluggish app start, and you say, "What's going on?" And yeah, we had the fifteen libraries plus. <laughs> you know, we are initializing everything before the splash screen because you know we we need to be ready for loading shit, and and then everything is slow. This is yeah, I think, I think once you start looking at perfect traces, I think one of two things will happen. Either you'll be like, oh my God, this is way too much and I don't ever want to look at this. Or <laughs> I hope you're like, oh my God, this is so bad. How did we ever get to this point, right? Like, yeah. uh, Let's yeah. fix it. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm, it's I'm like hoping either that... You, either you go all in or you go <laughs> denial. Like there's no middle ground. It's just, nope. No, nobody saw it, right? You yep. just close the it's like control W, you just close the tab and that's it. Nobody like very slowly knows. be like Yeah. It's like <laughs> this is these are not the droids you're looking for, right? That's the that's the, the thing. Uh, yeah, I mean yeah. just think about it, right? This work manager initialization here, which is bind applications, is actually a blocking activity start. Like that is like literally blocking activity start. So if you could just move the slice over here. You just shaved off like a significant portion of app startup, right? That's like, yeah. it's very trivial when I say it and when I show it because to you this way. When, when I see the the three blocks, you know, you have work manager, emoji, and uh, mm -hmm. the, the green one. I can't remember. It's profile which installer. One. Okay. So those are those are happening one after another, right? It's not. That's right. From, it's not, serial, it's yeah. not from a UI. To, from it's not UI. It's actually time. So the yes. the horizontal. So those are literally slowing down everything. That's right. Okay. And wow. like, if you look at this this thing, this is actually making binder calls to something else to another process. Uh, look at that. We. <laughs> where, is, where is it going? <laughs> I mean, I can click no, but, on the flow events uh, to know, but I think but like, the, the, yeah, it, you know, looking at perfecto traces, man, I look at some perfecto traces and I'm just shaking my head. I'm like, how, like, no, 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 no. I like, we gotta fix this, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, right. My favorite yeah. thing is okay. uh, you talk to an analytics library and you say, hey, you need to fix your analytics library because it's doing really bad things. And they're like, oh, None of our users have ever complained. Like, this is not a problem. And you show them a benchmark and they're like, oh, they're going to denial saying, no, 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 no. It's too hard to change this. There's too many yeah, requirements yeah. that we have. And you're like, no. Yeah, like, yeah. You're, That's like, not like, my problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I work, well, I don't want to be a jerk, but I work with AdMob uh, a lot. And, you know, I, I try to you know, postpone because AdMob is doing the same thing, right? Oh, dot in it in the on create, YOLO. Yeah. And, <laughs> And then, and then, like Sebastiano said, they are just loading web views like there is no tomorrow, right? So the the whole machinery when when it starts, 
and it starts for for real. And like it takes it takes uh, like a, a a minute, right, to to load everything. So if you can if you can postpone this kind of stuff, it it can be super super effective. Yeah. Oh man. Sure. We opened the Pandora's box. Thank you again, Rahul, and welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Sebastiano, what do we want to do? I think do it's time to wrap, to wrap it up, yes. So I I want to thank you, all of you, for being with us. Uh, it was a great episode with a lot of uh, information that you know it was it was painful to hear <laughs> for some of us. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's uh it's it's great material. I I, I love it. Uh, so just for closing up, if you thank you for the support in the chat, thank you for the new subscribers. Um, again, if you want to support us with, for free, you can connect your Amazon Prime account to your uh, Twitch account, and you can subscribe for free every month to one channel. That could be us. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> if you want to buy our merch, uh, there is a, there is a link in the description. It's going to be uh, cwti.link slash merch. Um, and we have t-shirts and we have hoodies, hats. Sebastiano did great designs. Um, we have mugs and bottles. There is a lot of stuff. Uh, if you have a dog, we also have a ban dog uh, bandana. And if you have a baby, we have small clothes. If you want to that. have your baby with Android Studio icons, we have that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, and, and also your dog. Well, if you want your dog well, with a... In, in theme with today's episode, one of the designs on the merch is called uh, Need for Speed. And it's all the profiler icons. Yes. <laughs> so... so, you know, uh, check it out. Check <laughs> it out. And thank you for the support. Um, yeah. Raul, thank you again. It was great. Well, yeah. It was intense as usual when you when you when you join us. But, but educational. It was great. It's always no, educational. No, no, that's for sure. It's just for my brain. It's intense for my brain. <laughs> you know, actually, when I wanted to uh, think about what I wanted to show off today, I thought this would only take me like forty minutes to show, but it turned out that it took me a lot longer. So. <laughs> well, I mean, estimates are. Dude, are you hard, you kept friend, adding right? things, so it's like, that's oh, true. I have one more thing. I have one more thing, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> well luckily we have a recording yeah for yeah. everybody that was asking before uh this as usual is going to be on youtube 24 hours after the end of the show yes so tomorrow and uh we are gonna see uh, each other next week again uh next week we have uh, josh and zach uh talking about circuit uh, which I'm very curious to know about because I essentially wrote to Zach and be like, hey, Zach, I have absolutely no idea what this is about. I heard about it. It sounds cool. Please come tell me. <laughs> this is a good well, approach, I think. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> good. That's good. That, that works when you have friends, Sebastiano. That's how you leverage friendships. Uh, that's what uh, friends are for, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Have Thank a good you. one, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>